A hearing in Lansing gives a hot mic and the public record to a wild array of vaccine conspiracy talk. But if you can set that aside, is it ethical for American businesses to enact COVID vaccine mandates? Is it ethical not to? And while Afghanistan roils from the sudden pullout of American troops, another Mideast country has many in Metro Detroit deeply worried. Lebanon in free fall. Today is Sunday, August 22nd, 2021, and this is Flashpoint. Hi, welcome to Flashpoint. Great to have you with us this morning. We remain on a crisis footing on a number of fronts as we join you today. In fact, it's hard to remember when that wasn't the case, and that is thanks in large part to the novel coronavirus. And can we focus for just a moment on that word novel? In this usage, the dictionary tells us that novel means of a new and unusual kind, different from anything seen or known before. Yes, we're all frustrated that the advice and guidance for dealing with COVID-19 shifts and wiggles so often, but that's because it is of a new and unusual kind. And, and this clever and nasty virus has the capacity to morph and evolve, which means it keeps getting novel. So we have to stay on the balls of our feet. The one thing we do know so far is that the vaccine is the best way to combat this deadly pandemic that has taken 620,000 American lives. And yet, when Brad Williams of the Detroit Regional Chamber pointed out that very fact in a hearing in Lansing on Thursday, he was actually booed. We heard hisses, like people reacting to the arrival of a villain in an old movie. Now, it isn't all that surprising, I guess. This hearing was filled with a lot of conspiratorial claptrap. Most of it went unchallenged. But at the heart of the hearing was the debate over whether businesses should be able to mandate that their employees get vaccinated. And coming up this morning, we'll talk about the business side of the debate, including whether businesses can afford not to demand vaccination among their workers. A little later on, Afghanistan has been the focus of world attention this past week, of course. But for the massive Lebanese population in Metro Detroit, there is a different disaster begging for attention. Fuel, medicine, and now even bread. Hard to find as the Lebanese economy is evaporating before our eyes. It's all today on Flashpoint. Workplaces, restaurants, and venues all over the country face the decision that most of them most assuredly would rather not have to make, and that's whether to require a COVID vaccine for workers and for customers. This is very foreign territory for most business owners and CEOs, and this week a legislative committee hearing was held to try to take that decision away from businesses. Let's talk about the way forward with Portia Robeson, the CEO of, the, of Focus Hope. Chad Livengood is the senior editor for Cranes Detroit Business. I want to start, though, with Brad Williams, a uh, governmental relations expert for the Detroit Regional Chamber, who was a part of that hearing on Thursday. Brad, uh, that, to me, for watching, seemed to be a surreal experience for you to say you weren't there to force or deny vaccine mandates, but you were there to tout the benefits of the vaccine, and you got booed. Well, that was a first for me, Devin, and uh, good morning. Uh, I've been doing this for a long time, and I've never been booed as I was doing my job. But, uh, you know, we went in there, and there was a lot of testimony from, uh, you know, discredited uh, doctors and nurses, uh, long been discredited. Um, and we thought it was important that the legislature hear from actual, uh, you know, business community and know that we're not going to sit here and let them impose uh, this sort of regulation on the business community uh, without a fight. Uh, so we went in there to talk about that and then, you know, had a long conversation about, you know, whether or not vaccines were actually helpful. You know, what we know as uh, the business community is the only way out of this pandemic is by getting vaccinated. Uh, and, you know, even though nobody in that room besides me wanted to hear it, I thought it was important to say. Well, I suppose I, I, some would argue that I need to have the other side of that debate that you faced on this program with me, but I am not about to let. Uh, you had people arguing that uh, masks cause cancer. I mean, it was a buffet of all of the misinformation that we've seen uh, about the vaccine. And I'll go back to the point that you were not there necessarily to say that there uh, should or shouldn't be uh, a rule either way for businesses, right? Right. All, all I was saying is that uh, it's not up to the legislature to decide 
how businesses keep their customers and their employees healthy. Yeah. Um, you know, if, if, if the business decides that it is through a mandate, then they should have that right. If they decide uh, that it's personal responsibility, then that's a right too, but it's not the legislature's place uh, to step in and tell the business uh, how to keep their employees and their customers safe. Uh, we've seen this with the masks, uh, with the debate over whether or not you can uh, impose a restriction against restrictions. It's kind of a, a, it's an odd place to be. Portia, you're the CEO of Focus Hope. Uh, your, your business is situated in a city that right now has a very badly lacking uh, vaccine rate. So tell me about how you've gone about making the decision and uh, what, what you think the calculations are uh, that business leaders should be making. Well, I'm sure you could say, see me take a deep breath as you were leading into this question because it is really the thing that keeps me up at night. We are going to welcome back um, small children in our early Head Start and Head Start program as soon as the next three weeks. Um, and how do we keep them safe unless we either mandate that our employees get vaccinated, which I've held off on doing because I really wanted to see um, what percentages we had when we got to this point. And how do I keep four-year-olds with a mask on? There's been some kind of idea about how we can do that, but um, we know it's going to be a challenge. We cannot social distance with little kids, right? We, the whole nature of our education process is to embrace those children and to have them um, engage with one another. And so the idea that people are still fighting using masks if they will not get vaccinated is mind boggling to me because we know that that is one of the ways to keep people safe. And, and I wonder how some of these folks who, um, who are adamantly against vaccinations and masks um, would feel if they were standing in a hospital room with someone's child who unfortunately may be very sick or even dying um, because they sent their unvaccinated um, child or they came into a school system where the children were unvaccinated. Yeah. It just, I can't imagine that this has become the way it has. Well, Portia, I, I said on this program about two weeks ago that uh, as for all of the thought that there's this push from the right against the vaccine, uh, we cannot blame Tucker Carlson for the low vaccine rate in Detroit. What are you hearing uh, about, do you think that, is there any progress being made uh, now that we're watching case counts go up again. Now, they haven't happened as much in Michigan and other places, which has forced the issue in some other states. What are you hearing is, is keeping this uh, rate so low? I think it's, it, I think there's some legitimate fears or there were when when the vaccine was first offered to folks, but we've had enough time now for people to speak to their physicians, to speak to people they trust, um, to do their own research as much as possible. I know that's what we've offered at Focus Hope. We brought in some physicians early on to kind of talk to our population, our employees to say, you know, ask the questions you need to ask. Yeah. At this point, um, I, I just think it's, it's, it's in some ways political for them too. It's almost a, a badge of pride. I'm not getting the vaccine. I don't know what's in it. Well, you know what? There are a lot of things that you probably indulged in throughout the course of your life that you didn't know what was in it. I said, anybody who's making that argument, I, be, I better not ever see them in a fast food drive through because you absolutely do not know what's in somebody's fast food hamburger and you've been indulging in that for the last 45 50 years so there's no reason um, that you shouldn't get a vaccine vaccine you you don't know what's an aspirin when you take it in the morning right so you know the idea that people are still walking around saying i don't know what's in it and, and you just got tested just got approved the reality of it is, is that science has been working on a vaccination for a very long time and so I know there's a level of distrust. There's a level of distrust from government. I'm happy to see even more ads and more people coming out to say, listen, particularly black men and women who are saying, I got the vaccine yeah. um, and I think it's safe because I think that that is kind of the only way we're going to get particularly minority yeah. populations to believe that the vaccine is helpful. Uh, uh, Chad, there's a huge pile of books there behind Portia. I know there's not one of them that says how to lead your company through a pandemic. So what, as you <laughs> talk to business leaders, um, I, I guess they both both, they have, uh, as, as bad as it might sound, to force a, a vaccine mandate on some, I think some of them are worried about not doing that, right? Um, yeah, they're, they're worried about what's going to happen with their workforces, if they're going to have uh, shortages. Uh, and we, we did a survey just this, this week on uh, just asking business executives uh, take their temperature, basically, on this issue right now. And 54% and of the business leaders said that they support vaccine mandates, 
but just 19% of those folks said they're actually mandating vaccines <laughs> in their workplace. That's so an interesting there is a disconnect. Pretty, yeah. Yeah, a pretty big disconnect where, um, yes, uh, go ahead, you first, basically, is the is the mantra here. And so I think we're going to see start seeing the, the tide change a little bit. Right now, we're, we're, we're seeing this huge debate over schools because um, the uh, the governor, Gretchen Whitmer, and her health director, Elizabeth Hertel, are sitting on the sidelines this time. They're not going to issue a, a statewide mandate. Um, Clearly, you know, there's a lot odds of odds with the chief medical officer, Dr. Dr. Caldoun. Yeah, I mean, Dr. Caldoun said, "Look, I have advised the governor that if um, if we had a mask mandate, it would lower the the rate of transmission. This is a complete, um, um, you know, uh, reversal from the uh, Whitmer doctrine uh, that was believe and listen to the scientists first and." And we're only left to sort of speculate that there is uh, political science here at, at work, that uh, the governor is seeing the polls and then and that uh, mandates from the state over schools really, really anger a lot of parents and uh, right in the middle. And so they're just going to sit this one out. Uh, I, interestingly enough, um, you know, Wayne County this week said, we, you know, we're advising schools to do this. Right. and. And so has the, the Department of Health and Human Services in West Michigan just today or, on, or on, just on Friday, the uh, Kent County and Ottawa County Health Departments issued mandates for all K through six schools to be masked. Allegan County's Health Department has done so as well, yeah. as well as Kalamazoo County. So Rock Rib Republican West Michigan is leading on mask mandates. It's just like you can't make this stuff up at this point, Devin. You sure can't. Uh, Brad, I want to get back to you then on uh, as we circle around on this, when uh, the chamber isn't uh, mandating for uh, mand or asking for mandates, isn't there a liability worry here that businesses have to face, for, especially when you're talking about customers, if you have a venue kind of situation, I've only got about 30 seconds left, but isn't liability a big worry here too? I think everyone has to be make the best decision for their own business that keeps their employees and their customers safe. You know, we've obviously seen some ven venues that are requiring vaccines. We're requiring vaccines for the Mackinac Policy right. Conference. I think where it's tight, that makes all the sense in the world. Great conversation. I know you all have a lot on your plate. Uh, thanks so much for sharing it with us. Uh, have a great weekend. Thanks for the time. We come back, we'll talk about the other crisis that's going on in the Middle East, one that you haven't heard as much about. It's in Lebanon. This is Flashpoint on Local 4. I love you too. Bye-bye. That was Jerry. Emma just said her first word. Oh. Jerry says hello and they'll be over soon. Who's Jerry? Is he a friend of yours? No. This Jerry. Our Jerry. And this is his wife and their little girl. Local 4, welcome Soaring Eagle Arts, Beats and Eats, presented by Flagstar Bank, Labor Day weekend in downtown Royal Oak. You can enjoy fabulous art, sample food from 60 restaurants, and see more than 200 bands on nine stages. Enjoy family fun in the Oakland County Park's Kids Zone with arts and crafts, a carnival, and the DIA Kids Stage featuring circus performers and a songwriting workshop. Admission is $5 before 3, $10 after, and is shared with 50 local nonprofits. Sponsored by these fine corporations. OK Detroit is we're heading back to the office, school, and hoping to return to our usual routines. We're wondering, will it ever truly be back to normal? Monday morning at 6.30. As students head back to campus, stress and anxiety might be taking their toll. All of the issues surrounding going to college. Now the colleges are weighing in how you can help your students. Local 4 News Today is bringing you the stories you need to help you get back to it. Monday on Local 4 News Today.
You, of course, know that the Detroit area is home to the largest Middle Eastern community outside the Middle East. Even if you have no ties to the Middle East, your experience of Middle East culture and certainly food by virtue of living in Detroit comes to you largely via Lebanon. And right now, the nation of Lebanon is in near economic collapse. Is there any kind of turnaround on the horizon? Nasser Beydoun is chairman of the Arab American Civil Rights League, and Osama Sablani is the publisher of the Arab American News. You've both been uh, good friends of this program for a long time. It's great to see both of you, though, in this other Middle Eastern crisis that we're following now. And Osama, I want to start with you because you just got back from Lebanon. The black humor joke is that if you get in line for bread, uh, in Beirut, by the time you get there, if they've still got bread, your money that you had in your hand at the time that you got in line is no longer enough to afford what you got because inflation is running so badly out of control. How bad is it? It's pretty bad. I um, Thank you, Devin. I, I, uh, I just came in from Lebanon and I witnessed uh, people waiting in line for hours and hours. Actually, they go and sleep in their cars and, uh, and they... Uh, miles and miles of, uh, of cars that are waiting for at the gas stations or at the yeah. bakery. I have seen this in my, my eyes. I just came back last night. And yes, it is true that the currency exchange rate uh, to the dollar, it fluctuates, you know, like uh, within hours, within a few minutes, it fluctuates back and forth. Uh, so it is pretty bad situation. But I am, I think that uh, the situation is going to get better soon because it cannot get any worse than this. Uh, I, well, I, 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 let's see if, uh, if, Osa, if, uh, if Nasser agrees with you, Osama. Uh, Nasser, you have been very, very critical of what I, I, I know you believe are all self-inflicted wounds in Lebanon. Oh, they're definitely, well, it's not self For the last 30 years, we've had the, the warlords. We have a very corrupt political class who's in bed with the... Uh, monopolies that control Lebanon. And for 30 years, they've basically raped and pillaged the country to, they've gotten to a point now where they've bankrupted the system. They haven't been able to provide water, electricity. Uh, they've destroyed the environment. Uh, they've killed the banking sector. They've killed the tourism sector, the agricultural sector. So all these things came to a culmination this year or last year, and it just exploded. And, you know, people have lost their life savings. As Osama said, the currency has gone from 1,500 lira to $1 to over 20,000 lira to $1 within a year. Yeah. Wow. Uh, there's shortages of gas, they shortages of flour, of basic necessities. And then they had the port explosion that happened August 4th last year, where um, over uh, ammonium nitrate almost wiped out all of Beirut. And then a couple of, last week, they had another explosion where people were trying to get fuel that killed 24 people. So the country's a mess. And I, unlike Osama, I'm not, I'm not optimistic as long as this corrupt political class continues to run the country. Uh, Osama, you want to take a shot at that? Is there any chance? Yeah, of... Yes, I, I, I totally agree with Nasser. I, I believe that the corruption uh, is, the, is the problem in Lebanon and the accountability doesn't even exist. I think the problem is not with individuals. I think the problem is more than, uh, than, than an individual and political parties and, and leadership. I think it is the system itself. It's, I think the, the way that we are uh, in, in Lebanon see government completely different than the way we see it in, in, in the United States. Uh, this is a sectarian-based uh, political system that each, uh, you know, religious group or, or political party protect its own people, and therefore the corruption starts from the bottom all the way up. I believe that the way that this should be addressed is change the political system in Lebanon to be a, a comprehensive system that, based on citizenship, not sectarianism. Mm.
Uh, I, I believe I believe everybody is talking about it right now. We should, you know, I, I think the Lebanese people believe that they should be revisiting the way that Lebanon is structured at this time. Uh, uh, Nasser, I, I'm curious as to what you think the uh, ripple effects here could be. Uh, Lebanon has always uh, had an outsized influence as headquarters and home for Hamas and Hezbollah. Uh, Americans and Israel in particular are always deeply focused on what's going on in Lebanon. But what is the potential for turmoil in Lebanon to create further instability across the Mideast? Well, you know, you stated earlier that the Middle East doesn't need any more instability. I mean, you have we see what's happening in Afghanistan today. We, you know, we see what's happening in Syria and Yemen and Iraq. Um, and Lebanon is in a unique, a unique position. Lebanon has always been kind of this, um, you know, we've suffered through 25 years of civil war. Yeah. Um, we had an era where, you know, things people thought things were getting better and you know, but then we had the devastating war of 2006 between Hezbollah and uh, Israel. So, you know, Lebanon is a flashpoint. You've got Palestinians living in refugees. You've got over a million and a half Syrian refugees. You've got Hezbollah, who is a counterforce to Israel. Uh, and, you know, you have so many players and so many different things that anything can trigger you know, Lebanon is uh, could be on the cusp of a civil war. Uh, anything it could happen. Uh, uh, I, 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 Devin, I believe that Hezbollah is one of the most stable factors uh, in less stable stable factors in Lebanon. Uh, I of believe course that doesn't the, comfort Israelis or pro-Israeli Americans, right? Well, the, Israeli, the Israelis have to to choose their own course of of actions, but I, I believe that Hezbollah's position in Lebanon and the strength that they have for the resistance have prevented Israel from taking, uh, you know, military journeys in, uh, in, in Lebanon and destroying the country. That's for sure. Now, I believe that Hezbollah is not the cause of this issue. Uh, Hezbollah is the least corrupt political party in Lebanon. Uh, the political system in Lebanon had to be revisited, that's for sure. Let me, but you, while you were there, uh, I think as a symbol of how seriously America is worried about this, uh, I believe it's your understanding that the head of the CIA was in Lebanon while you were there. Correct. William Burns was there, and he met with the uh, uh, Army chief, with the intelligence chief, and also with the security national, national security chief. And uh, they were very happy with the American uh, Position. I do not believe that the United States uh, is, is uh, 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 you know, is pushing for a total collapse. Certainly, the United States is going after Hezbollah and its weapons, uh, and that's a, an Israeli, uh, you know, a political uh, uh, goal that they need to remove uh, the weapons of Hezbollah from their hands in order for them to continue their, the, you know, uh, total uh, control of the situation in the Middle East. But I believe the United States is getting ready right now to take some actions. Uh, I am, uh, you know, I'm, I'm surprised that uh, that what's happening in Afghanistan is not going to have any ripple effect yeah. in, in Lebanon and other areas, Syria and also in Iraq. I believe that the United States should pull out. They do not know how to build nations. We do not know how to build nations. We know how to destroy nations very well, but we are very, uh, you know, um, uh, um, not suited to build nations. The, the track record uh, so far in the Middle East uh, doesn't have a lot to hang its hat on, that's for sure. Uh, lastly, uh, uh, Nasser, I've got just a few seconds left here, but now uh, Israel and the U.S. are very concerned that a shipment of fuel is coming into Lebanon from Iraq. And, uh, the, Iran. Uh, if, uh, I'm sorry, Iran. Yeah, not Iraq. Iran. I suppose if you're if you've got a shortage of fuel, you take fuel wherever you can get it, but that's also going to cause some consternation, isn't it? It is. It'll cause a lot of issues. But if the U.S. is really worried about it, then they should send fuel to the Lebanese. I mean, and, that, and that's you, what they're doing right now. You've got to help the Lebanese people. I mean, if you, like you said, Devin, if you don't have electricity, if you don't have water, and if you don't have fuel to cook, what are you going to do? You're going to, you're going to try and uh, get it from anywhere. If Hezbollah can deliver, you know, that just boosts their position in in the country. If they, you know, if somebody else can deliver, then, you know, if America wants to help Lebanon, you know, they need to basically make sure that they help the Lebanese yeah. people 
and not the political class. Nasser Bedoun, Osama yes. Sablani, it is always good to rely on uh, the expertise that you both have. Thanks so much for the time, and hope we'll see you in person again real soon. Thanks, Evan. Thank you. you. Back with more on Flashpoint right after this. This is one more reason why Gardner White is Detroit's number one mattress store. We guarantee the lowest price on your new mattress. We have amazing sales on thousands of in-stock top name brand mattresses every day. That's why there's Gardner White and no one else. Another day, another chance. Make the most of it with a network that can deliver gig speeds to the most businesses and get the advanced cybersecurity solutions you need with Comcast Business Security Edge. Ask how to get Comcast Business Security Edge to help protect all your connected devices. And get started with fast and reliable internet and voice for just $35 each a month when you buy both. Plus, ask about our best deal on a gig bundle and how to get a $500 prepaid card. Call or go online today to learn more. Comcast Business. Powering possibilities. At Fireside Hearth and Home, our hearth experts will help you select the perfect hearth for your home. Every question I asked was answered, and we're hard to please, so they were absolutely superb. You gotta go to Fireside. They are the experts, they know what they're doing, and they make it just an easy process. With fall in the air and winter around the corner, choose from either half-off installation or 0% financing for 18 months. Visit one of our four convenient locations or firesidehearth.com. Right now at Gardner White. Save on hundreds of mattress door busters in stock. Price cut and price cut again. Like Serta, any size, $99. Serta Perfect Sleeper, just $2.99. The Labor Day Sale, going on now at Gardner White. The heart and soul of the city. How the people don't you know? From the corner hot dog vendor to musicians who can throw. And we're much, much more than that. You can watch it on shores of our great city to the towns we love to cruise we are Detroit we are Detroit and we are strong as always, out of time before I run out of questions. All the more reason to be back with us again next week. Hope you have a great week. Meet the Press coming up next. We'll see you next time right back here for Flashpoint.